let's explore one of the most interesting tools in Autograph, the Instancer. The Instancer is a generator that can be added in any composition in order to create copies, also called instances, of one or more graphic sources. The element to be instantiated is referenced in the template parameter. You can enter any type of graphic source in this template parameter. So that can be an image, an animation, a vector element, or even a generator. Let's start by adding a circle generator. As you can see, right now there's no visible circle in the viewer. The number of instances created by the instancer is defined by the dimension size. This parameter is called dimension one, which means that there can be multiple dimensions, as you can see, but we're not going to get into that right now. By increasing the number of elements in a dimension, we can see that a circle appears. In reality, it's not actually just one circle, but 10 circles stacked on top of each other in the same position. In order to define the position or the movements of these circle instances, we can use the parameters under instance transform one. Here you'll find the same transform parameters that you would find in a layer, from position to skew up to amount. If we change these parameters, like the position parameter over here, you'll see that these 10 circles continue to move in the same way, always stacked on top of each other. These 10 instances are positioned at 160 on the x-axis, whereas the transform of the global layer housing the instancer is at 0, 0. But if we open up the instance transform parameters again, you'll notice that there's a parameter called accumulate transform a little lower. So let's change the position back to zero, check accumulate transform, and this time if we change the position value, we'll see the 10 circles appear. Since the circle originally has a radius of 100 pixels and so a diameter of 200 pixels, changing the position to 200 positions the circles side by side, giving the impression that they're slightly touching. As mentioned earlier, it's possible to select the instancer and move it towards the left. In this case, it's the transform parameters of the layer housing the instancer that will be used. Transform changes are not just limited to position. Let's space these circles out a bit more and change their scale. By adjusting the scale to 0.9, we'll reduce the size of an instance by 10% compared to the previous one. We can also adjust the rotation in order to create a spiral effect. Of course, you can increase the number of instances in order to create a spiral that's more concentrated. Any changes made to the original circle, like the radius or the edge mode, will be applied to all instances. So for example, here we can change the circle thickness or change its color. Since all of these parameters can be animated, it's possible to change the radius or even the scale for all of these elements. Let's change the edge mode back to none for now. And since I mentioned animating the radius, we can add an animator to indicate that we want to change the radius from 0 to 100 in target mode, while keeping the interpolation type at elastic. In the span of a second, we'll see all of the circles appear on screen. Each instance has an identical synchronized animation, but it's possible to shift this animation in time using the instance time offset parameter. Let's go to the middle of the animation and modify this parameter, which will shift the animation in time. But this time shift will still be applied to every instance. By changing the time offset to two images, for example, and activating accumulate time offset, 
The circles will now appear one after the other based on this animation. Here again, any changes made to the original circle used for instancing will apply to all duplicates. Let's change the interpolation type to bounce. The animation changed and now the circles bounce one after the other. So it's possible to create variations for each instance, including time offsets. But all parameters that make up an instance can be modified according to the specific instance. When the instancer creates its instances, it gives each of them a unique identifier. So it's possible to add a random generator to the circle's color parameter, which will generate a random color and set it so that this random color is determined by the instance's identifier. This way, each instance will have a different color. Just be aware, since the color parameter is a parameter with four dimensions, the fourth one being the alpha layer, you'll notice that the colors are transparent. To compensate, we can add a math modifier that will come into effect right after the color generator. Set it to replace mode and set the influence to zero for the red, green, and blue parameters, keeping an influence of one or full and complete to manage the alpha layer. This way, the circles will no longer be transparent and will display 100% of the color defined by the random generator. At the beginning of the video, I explained that the instancer can duplicate any type of graphic element used by this template parameter. That means that it's possible to import any kind of logo and use it as a template source. So as you can see here, the logo is a little bit too big. And since the animation was done before based on the radius of the circle, the logo is no longer animated. But it's possible to add a modifier onto this source before duplicating it, like a transform modifier, for example. Among the different transform parameters available, there's scale, which allows us to reduce the size of the logo a bit so that the duplicates are not so much on top of each other. Let's reduce the number of instances to 10. And let's animate the rotation parameters, not here in the instance, but those in the instance transform a little lower. Now we can kind of roll up this tentacle at 60 degrees, go back to the beginning of the animation to create a new key, go a bit further and open up this tentacle in the other direction. The time offset is still active and you'll notice that this animation undergoes a time shift of two images per instance. During this rapid movement, it's possible to set autograph to generate a motion blur to make this animation look more fluid. Let's just get rid of this motion blur for the moment so that we can see the logo a bit better during the animation. And keep in mind that whatever the number of instances generated by the instancer, we only have one layer in the stack. A layer that can also undergo its own transformations like rotations or changes in scale, and can also have a modifier added to it or even be duplicated by another instancer. At the beginning of the tutorial, I also mentioned that it's possible to use multiple dimensions with this instancer. By changing the number of dimensions to 2, you can see that dimension size 2 and instance transform 2 have just appeared. Let's set the number of dimensions to 2 and set the rotation of instance transform 2 to negative 120 degrees. The time offset is still in effect, and you can see that the first tentacle unfolds first followed by the second, which progressively unfolds as well. Now if we add a third instance to this dimension, we'll have a third tentacle that will progressively unfold as well. All instance parameters and all source parameters can be animated and modified according to the instance identifier or index. Earlier we saw an example with the random generator, but other generators are also capable of being based on an instance identifier as a varying factor. 
So far, we've only used a single image or single generator as a source, but the instancer was designed to be able to handle multiple graphic sources together within the same composition that could be dispatched as duplications progress. We'll have the opportunity to explore this further in another tutorial.